This is a video I have wanted to make for so long. A collaboration between three companies resulting in creating what I believe to be one of the best Class D amplifiers in existence. This is not a custom job using unobtainium parts. You could literally go online right now and purchase every single component I used. Make sure to make it all the way to the end of the video because we did sprinkle some special spice on this amplifier that had insane results. I got my friend Mike Galusha here to help me uh, with everything because I suck at <laughs> soldering. Not so. much soldering involved. The uh, only real thing is that we're going to change the op amp on the input board uh, that uh, Bruno gave uh, Mike a little info on. So we're going to try that. I haven't done any surface mount stuff in a couple years, so hopefully I won't kill it. <laughs> we will hope for the best, but uh, we're going to go ahead and unbox everything, get everything out. We're doing um, the case by Gent Audio, the Purify amplifier modules with the interface board, and we're doing the power supply by Hypex. Uh, it's going to be a, a really fun undertaking and uh, check it out. The Audiophonics HPA S400ET is the machine that inspired this project. Audiophonics, one of the collaborators in this new amplifier project, sent out the S400ET for review. I was interested in this amplifier because I recently bought a pair of Infinity Reference 8 Kappa speakers and needed a good amount of power since these speakers dip below 2 ohms in the low end. If you haven't watched the review video on the Audiophonics amplifier, I think you should and I'll link it below. So after opening the amplifier and looking inside, I thought to myself, Hold on, Mike, I think I could build something like this. Then what sealed the deal was the interview I did with the designer of the Purify modules that live inside the Audiophonics uh, and my project, Bruno Puzzes. I was convinced I could build an amplifier that could provide low noise and powerful output. So I started making some calls and arranged for Purify to send out the Eval 1 Eigentacht amp modules and interface board. Audiophonics jumped on and sent out the Hypex SMPS 1200 A400's power supply and two pair of the identical identical sexy binding posts they use on their amplifiers. Lastly, Gent Audio has a case with pre-machined holes made explicitly for this project. This is where I made the project a bit tougher on us because I ordered the higher end model with the holes for binding posts instead of the stock version matching up with the Purify input board. So we had to do a bit more work and modify the board to make it all fit, but after it was done, it looked so good. It, so if you don't have a considerable background in modifying surface mount components, on PCB boards, definitely go with the original version of the case because at that point, all you do is mount, screw, and connect, and you're ready to rock and roll. So because I ordered the better case, we were forced to remove the onboard uh, power switch and replace it with a dab of solder so that it's always on and we can control the power with the power entry connector instead. We also had to remove the banana post that came stock with the board and soldered 16 gauge cable, the smallest we could fit in the PCB board and put it all together. Together. Here's a quick breakdown of what's inside the amplifier. All the cables you see here were included with the Gent Audio case, which made it a lot easier to connect the power supply, not only to the Purify boards, but also to the IEC power socket and the LED on the front panel. We did have to do a bit of soldering from the interface board to the five-way binding posts, and we also had to remove the switch on 
the board and dabbed some solder on there so that way it's always in the on position and the power on off switch is controlled by the IEC socket. Another important little cable is the mains jumper that plugs into the power supply. This just makes sure that we are working with the American 115 volt and not the overseas 230 volt because that would not be a good situation for anybody. The big black set of cables here are the main power supply cables that connect from the PSU to the Puri 5 board. The colorful set of cables next to it are the auxiliary supply cables. Aside from plugging in the little cable to the LED light in the front, that's all you need to do and the project is almost finished. One really cool feature that came from the Ghent Audio case is how they designed the front fascia to have no visible screws. I thought this was a really nice design feature. We're going to swap the op amps on the Purify board after we measure the unit and take it for a listen, of course. So let's see how it measured. The measurements were as expected, the closest thing to perfect as I could have hoped for. We measured the audiophonics and the project amp, and the measurements were almost identical. Both measured exceptionally well. However, I want to focus on the project amp since it's the star of the show today. The graphs show FFT, which shows the harmonics, and the sign ad demonstrates how low the signal to noise ratio and distortion actually were. I think these measurements establish that they are state of the art, almost perfect measurements. What surprised us was how different the project amp sounded from the audiophonics even though they measured almost identical. This is perhaps one of the best examples of why we should trust our ears because measurements showed us what? That they are both quiet with not much noise or distortion if any. It showed us at what point they should start demonstrating an audible amount of noise. Still, measurements won't show us how our ears will interact with the amplifier's engineering, the environment they are performing in, and the speakers they are working with. So it's apparent that you cannot judge a piece of gear just from observing objective measurements, they are simply there to provide a technical breakdown of how the amplifier performs mechanically. The final verdict on the opinion of a piece of gear will always rest on the subjectivity of the listener's sonic experience. Now, mic speakers that we tested them on are extremely sensitive, so it wasn't hard for either amp to drive them, because they are beasts, <laughs> but what we discovered sonically left us both a bit surprised. I had already taken the audiophonics for a spin on my own, did my own video, and my Mike and I both agreed that the way Audiophonics designed the input stage they used, which was the only difference between both amplifiers. Here is what Mike thought of comparing sound quality between the two. Uh, Purify eval version, in my opinion, sounds a little bit better. Uh, it seems, the Audiophonics seems a little closed in, which I know is not really a good uh, description, but the sound just seems freer and more open with the Purify version and uh, maybe a little bit richer tonally in the bottom end, um, which I actually preferred. I, again, don't have a measurement reason why that is the case. They both have basically nothing. <laughs> FF, their FFTs look really good. There's no upper harmonics to speak of. It's just nothing harsh. The Audiophonics version on a Radiohead track sounds just almost strident at exactly the same level. It's not terrible by any stretch of the imagination. It's just not quite as good as the Purify eval version, in my opinion. I will have to agree with Mike's evaluation of both amplifiers. The Audiophonics was smooth and pleasant. It's a fantastic amplifier, and I do not want to undervalue it because, in my opinion, it still maintains its place as the best value for dollar amplifier on the market today. But the fact that our project amp was more open and dynamic and clarity and low end performance was crazy. We mainly wanted to compare the two because they are almost identical in build and measurements. We found a notable difference in what we heard, which was unexpected. We used Radiohead's Everything in Its Right Place as our control or you know reference song. I love the song. It provides a wide range of sonics to discern between components. Now there was one last task ahead of us. We are swapping the op amps from the Eval 1 with a pair of OPA 1656 instead of the OPA 1612 that it natively comes with. Wow, 
What a difference. Bruno, you were correct about the OPA 1656. It was like we connected an utterly different amplifier. So for those brave enough to swap a surface mount op amp, do this. You have to. This amplifier just entered an upper echelon of quality I never dreamed of what that was possible for a Class D. After I left Mike's place, I hurried home and plugged the amp into my system to see how we would run my infinity towers. It was magical. The delivery was flawless from start to finish, pushing the lower end without a hitch. This is why I wanted to do this in the first place. My goal was achieved and my expectations were blown through the roof. However, the grand takeaway for me with this whole experience of building this eval one and being able to play with the audiophonics amp is that class D has indeed come a long way. I think Purify and audiophonics are at the forefront of what will be a change in the tide. I won't be surprised if people who initially listened to class A and class AB might start migrating to class D after a proper listening session with some of these products. A huge thanks to Purify, Audiophonics, and Gent Audio for making this happen. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. I'm Mike on Audio. As always, trust your ears and I'll see you next time.